Vikes Now, I am Dustin Baker, and we are in the spot where we didn't want to be with the Vikings season, even after it felt really promising at 6-4. and four. We are, I've had people message me on Twitter asking me what the Vikings playoff hopes are now, which are next to nil. <clears throat> they have a 3% uh, probability of getting into the dance, uh, depending on which simulator you use. So yes, they are living on a prayer, and I thought since I've had so many folks message me about you know what, what would need to happen in theory, I, I better do a show about it just to get it all out in the open. So at uh, 6 and 4 not long ago in November during Dobbs Mania, the peak in retrospect of the Vikings season, they had about an 80% chance of getting into the playoff, the regular season after party, the playoffs, and now that's dwindled to 3%. Uh, and any, winning any one of these previous losses, whether it's against the Bears or the Broncos or the Bengals or the Lions or the Packers, winning just one of those games would have put the Vikings in a driver's seat with certainly something to play for this week to get in the dance but no cigar. Alas, there is a long shot hope, so these next 10 minutes are going to dive into that and explain what would need to happen for the Vikings to get in. And for context, if, you, if you're a gambler at all, I, I only gamble on fantasy football, but I know some of you are gamblers. It would be a four-team a four team parlay, depending on which NFC South team you think would win or lose. And if you put down 100 bucks for the four-team parlay for the Vikings to get in the postseason, you'd win about 4300 That's how much of a long shot it is. So let's just go through some of the, 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 the matchups, the scenario. Foremost... Captain Obvious is that the Vikings must beat the Lions on Sunday in the what we call in the Midwest the, the noon game. Uh, they play at Ford Field, which won't be easy, and if they can't beat the Lions in their building or the Packers in their building or the Bengals on the road, why the hell are they going to start beating the Lions? Uh, there is a mentality or, or a mindset that says because even like anti-tanking fans like myself, uh, you know, we finally come to a spot where, you know, they might as well just lose this game to the Lions because then you'll get a draft pick between 9th and 12th, I believe. Uh, but if, if they're in the mood to do the opposite, which was when we all want them to lose to get a better draft pick, they're probably going to show up and win. So the first part of getting into the postseason, if you still want that to happen, is for the Vikings to beat the Lions on Sunday. Then, uh, in the same noon window, there are two AFC South games going on in which the Vikings need one team to lose. They either need the Buccaneers to lose to the Panthers or the Saints to lose to the Falcons. If you're watching the Vikings and then scoreboard peeping and you see, hey, Carolina is up 21-10 on the Buccaneers, that's good news if you want the Vikings to get in the postseason. Or, if the Bucs are steamrolling the Panthers, which is what should happen, then you're hoping for a Falcons win over the Saints. First and foremost, after the Vikings win, in that same window, you need that one of those NFC South teams to lose. Just one. It doesn't matter if it's the Bucks or the Saints. One of them has to lose. You got it? The Vikings beat the Lions, and let's say the Falcons beat the Saints. You're in a decent spot. You're halfway there. Then in the, the 3 o'clock window, the late afternoon games, there's no oars you know, it, these have to happen. The Bears would have to beat the Packers. And then the Cardinals, who looked pretty good last week, would have to beat the Seahawks. And voila, the Vikings would be in the postseason, I believe, getting the seventh seed. Probably on track to play the Cowboys in Dallas, who are virtually unbeatable in, you know, that stadium. Uh, but I will point out the parallels here. The, the Packers have a win and end situation at Lambeau Field against the Bears. It's the same shit they had last year against the Lions, and they bungled it even with Aaron Rodgers on the roster. Now, the Lions were unbelievably hot at that time last year. The Bears uh, are, are somewhat close to that. I think they've, they've won five of their last some, seven or something of the sort. So if you're a Packer fan, you're probably on a little pens and needles because you had the same thing last year against an upstart team that's looked really good in the past six, seven weeks. And so, yeah, if the Bears knock off the Packers along with that one NFC South team, then the Vikings would only need Kyler Murray and friends to defeat the reeling Seahawks. And when I talk it out loud like that, it's like, God, that isn't that much of a long shot. Uh, but I think the biggest part of the hypothetical parlay is the Vikings beating the Lions. And the timing of it is kind of fun because you'll presumably watch the Vikings game. And if they hop out to a lead and I'm, I'm guessing Nick Mullen starts and if they're cooking and they beat the lions and boom, the Falcons beat the saints. 
Then you pivot to the next slate of games where you want the Bears to beat the Packers and the Cardinals to take care of business against the Seahawks. So that that's the scenario. It is a Vikings win over the Lions, an NFC South team to lose either the Buccaneers or the Saints, and then the Bears over the Packers and the Cardinals over the Seahawks. Now, the, the timing, again, that's fun because it's a little bit staggered. Uh, but on the whole, if they don't reach the postseason, and I'm sure... I'll chat, I'll chat with Josh Fry about this and maybe even have an independent show. Uh, the, the Vikings defense really went through an odyssey, and it was an ill-fated one here down the stretch. In the first three games of the season, per EPA per play, which is an uh, efficiency analytical metric to analyze football, and in defense in particular in this scenario, the Vikings started off the first three games of the season ranked 26th in the NFL. First three games, then through weeks four through 14, which is 11 games, they ranked first per EPA per play on defense in that game, in that span. And that's why the Vikings won so many games in a row. They won five in a row without Justin Jefferson before Kirk got hurt in week eight. And everything was fine. You could insert Dobbs or Mullins and reasonably expect to win because the defense, I kid you not, was the best in the business from weeks four through 14. Then the fourth quarter of the Bengals game showed up. And correspondingly, in the last three games, that same EPA per play metric, the Vikings now rank 31st in the last three games alone. For context, uh, at one point, I want to say it was after the Raiders win, 3 to nothing, the Vikings climbed all the way to 6th best in the NFL per EPA per play. And now they've meandered down to 17th, right in the middle of the pack, which is kind of where we thought they would go as a ceiling when the season started. Like, hey, if Brian Flores can make this defense just a little bit average, then the sky is the limit. Well, we didn't expect all 32 turnovers in 16 games. The Vikings are near the bottom of the league in that. I think the only team that's worse is the Browns. If they're still worse, I'll have to check on that. Well, that is where we're at. The defense collapsed. Um, And then one thing we're probably going to have against the Lions is starters on starters. Dan Campbell said, I think about a week ago, that we will rest when the season is over. And that implies, even though the Detroit Lions are firmly locked into the three seed, no matter what happens, evidently they're going to play their starters and say, you know, injury risks be damned. We want to beat the Vikings, and there would be no reason, I don't think, for Kevin O'Connell to rest his starters. You might see more guys like Brian Asamoah, maybe Lewis Seen get some playing time. If if not, if not now, then win for guys like that. But uh, the Vikings will convince themselves that they have a puncher's chance to get in the postseason, chiefly because of that scenario I just outlined. But it should be uh, starter on starters between the Lions and Vikings at Ford Field on Sunday. And then the final thing I'll note after outlining this uh, you know, long shot playoff scenario is that we're, we're firmly in the, the draft pick versus playoff debate. Now, thankfully, if you are team, just screw it, let's get the draft pick. It's very unlikely that the Vikings get into the postseason. So there's really not a whole lot to play for. But let's just say if they play their best game of the season against the Lions, then that would, you know, screw up your draft positioning when most of us think they're going to draft a quarterback. You I mean, if they get in the postseason, you're going to pick anywhere from 16th to 32nd. And if they lose to the Lions, you're going to nestle in anywhere between 9th and 13th. So that's that's the oddity of this. It's it's the the debate. If if they win, then you will kick back and watch the late afternoon slate of games, hoping for a Packers loss and a Seahawks loss. And then, you know, you could get in the playoffs and go play the Cowboys. Um, but if they just do what you expect them to do and lose like they have for the past three weeks, then you're going to have a pretty fancy draft pick. And my guess is it probably settles in around 10th or 11th. So, uh, you know, I'm guessing this game is going to find a way to be wild or a one-score game because, you know, when are they not other than, the, than when they play the Packers? That's the only team where they either win convincingly or get their asses beat. Um, and, yeah, and we will make a full pivot on this show about a week from now into the offseason part. We'll, we'll intermix some NFL thoughts on you know playoff picks and MVP stuff and who's going to win the Super Bowl. But I think it's a very fair time for, for you to start looking at mock drafts to say, all right, you know who's out there? I'm guessing some of you watched the, the college football playoff last night. Two possible Vikings quarterbacks were showcased in Michael Penix and J.J. McCarthy. And, wouldn't you know it, they'll play in the National Championship in Houston next week, I believe. 
So that, yeah, we are here. Uh, it is fair game to start examining draft stock, draft players, which quarterbacks, hopefully they find a running back. They're going to need an edge rusher from somewhere. Um, and the only caveat would be if this this four-team parlay of the Vikings beating the Lions, the Bears beating the Packers, the Cardinals beating the Seahawks, and either the Bucks or Saints losing, that would get the Vikings into the postseason. I will be back tomorrow with Josh Fry. We're probably going to start to put a bow on this 2023 season because the uh, aforementioned parlay is so unlikely. But yeah, the Vikings are tunneling toward a 7-10 and 10 season or if they get funky and win, an 8-9. and nine. All right, that's all I got for Tuesday. We'll be back Wednesday. Skull, baby.